Maybe I can just say a word. Uh, we know Kay already. He spoke to us, I think it's almost a year ago. Um, we were two, at two, two years ago. Two, two years, years ago. ago. Wow, that's crazy. Um, and um, when we started this newsletter session now, uh, Kay was the first sending me some tips for companies, how to um, have great video calls, uh, um, how to make people um, feel that they're like in the same room and they're not. So I thought maybe Kay could give us some advice how to handle that new situation. And I'm so happy that you said yes. And I welcome you and I give you the microphone. And um, yes, so take the stage, Kay, please. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for the invitation. Good morning, uh, everyone. Some of you, I mean, I've been here taking notes from the chat. Singapore, the, you're certainly not in the morning. That's more like a creative uh, evening, I suppose. Germany, the US, uh, you guys are up in the middle of the night or so creative, uh, very early morning for you guys. Netherlands, Czech Republic, the UK, incredible. A few months ago, I was going through uh, the list of conferences and talks that we were going to give this first few months of the year together with Ali, my partner, Path, our communications manager, Maria, and uh, you know, if back then you'd have told me, and that was not a long time ago, that was like a month and a half ago. Back then you'd have told me, well, actually all of these events that you have here are all gonna be canceled. Instead, you're gonna be talking to 114 people, most of them in their pajamas, with uh, competing for the ugliest mug. I would have been like, no, no, <laughs> you're joking, what are you talking about? <laughs> Go play with someone else. Um, but there you are. Um, times are uncertain and, um, and we, we adapt. I see Sebil even in, on camera somewhere. Hi Sebil. <laughs> okay, um, to, make, uh, to make this momentous, I, I wanted to take a photo of myself with all of you because uh, this doesn't happen every day. So um, I'm gonna, let's see if I can do this properly. I have two screens here. Uh, and uh, I do it like that, and I'm gonna take it myself a selfie with you guys. Um, I promise I will share it. <laughs> there you are, fantastic. Okay, now I need to switch the screens again, because otherwise I will get very confused. Um, this me. There you are. Fantastic. So, <clears throat> indeed, Rahel invited us to to participate in this creative mornings. Thanks again. Really, an honor to be uh, with you again after two years in the most unexpected circumstances. And the theme, the theme is is not an easy one. It's identity. It's about who you are. And you really cannot get much deeper than than that. Um, and you know, I'm not an expert in psychology, in definition of yourself, of your persona. Really, I mean, I I, I won't pretend uh, I am or we are at uh, at Studio Banana, but um, uh, I'll do my best. You know, it's. Um, at the same time, I think it's it, it's super challenging times we're living, um, really, and uh, for all of you, for all of us. At the same time, the times have never been easier to experiment new things. At the same time, to be authentic, to be truly yourself. Why? Because I think I've never seen a comparable level of forgiveness 
of tolerance, of understanding for each other, of uh, empathy. Why? Very simple, because we're in this together. Uh, it's not a situation that just affects a few of us, the rich or the poor, the tall or the short, the ugly or the beautiful. It really affects all of us. And I think we have developed uh, all of a sudden an accelerated sense of uh, empathy. You remember a few, maybe last year, when there was this uh, gentleman who was uh, doing a live uh, um, participation in the BBC from his home in, I think, uh, Hong Kong or Singapore, I don't remember where exactly, and suddenly his children appeared in the background and, uh, you know, back then he was just the father of memes. And, uh, you know, if nowadays you will probably see a couple of rascals appearing at some point during the conference behind me. No biggie, right? And they're my children, obviously. And uh, we have developed very quickly this sense of tolerance, which allows us to be authentic, to be ourselves, for our identity to come to the fore. And, um, and that's beautiful, I think. That's really beautiful because, uh, you know, I think in all of this uh, darkness, in all of these problems that uh, have emerged out of this uh, situation, which are many. I think we we also have, especially the creative people like you guys, like us, we have the obligation to look at, uh, at the light, to look at uh, life in all of this, to look at uh, the positive things so that they can persist once all of this is over. We can uh, we can preserve those things, cherish them, and make sure that we don't lose them afterwards. Um, you know, I was reading the chat and I've just here taken note from something really beautiful that someone wrote there. I don't know who exactly. I really don't take credit for what I'm gonna read, but it's really beautiful. It says, my mother always told me, it's not, not worth running after your shadow, because that's made by the sun. Wait when you're tired out. It will wait with you. The next morning, you're in front again. It will follow you. Instead of one step forward, I take one step back, move on. I just take a break. I will be back on track. Beautiful. Whoever wrote that, one of you, <coughs> 114. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Um, as a creative professional, you know, as uh, I have mentioned, my name is Kei Kawamura. I'm co-founder of a creative uh, studio called Studio Banana. And as a creative professional, I'm obviously quite used to talking in front of audiences using the support of visuals. Uh, that's kind of what's expected um, and probably what works best in most cases. So um, I, I wanted to share a few things with you, but uh, then I'll backtrack on that. Let me share screen, let's see here. I guess you're seeing your beautiful creative mornings <coughs> background. Identity, big challenge. Thanks, Rahel. Um, you know, at City Banana, we're probably most known for this. Some of you may have seen it, may have even uh, tested it, slept in it, because it is indeed something for a product for sleeping, very appropriate for creative mornings, if you're a bit sleepy. We also create environments. We create places for communities. We create places where people can flourish, meet, have a sense of belonging, work together, share their talents, and so on. However, <clears throat> I'm not gonna talk to you about all of that. Uh, very simple, you can just go on our website and see a lot of that stuff. Uh, because yeah, I could be hiding myself behind this uh, 
slides, lots of beautiful pictures for the rest of the talk. And probably you would have a nice time, but I, I would have felt, I think, at the end that uh, I would have used, I have used the images as an obstacle between you and me. Uh, and these are really no times to add more distance in our communication. On the contrary, what I've decided today is uh, something very risky, risky certainly for me because it's new, is that I'm not going to use images. Uh, instead, I'm going to talk to you from a very honest place. So I ask you for your understanding, and I know that I will have it, but I ask you for your understanding if at some point in the presentation I don't totally master the discourse. This has all been a little uh, put together <clears throat> a bit quickly. <clears throat> and I, I'll never forget something that uh, Tina Roth, the founder of Creative Mornings, told me when we met uh, some seven years ago, I think, in, in New York, uh, she told me, you know, Creative Mornings is just about connecting with the audience. It's no more than that. It's really about that connection. So whatever gets on the way of that connection is an obstacle. And today I've, I've made the decision that just putting images on screen is going to be uh, blocking our connection. And instead, I want to look <clears throat> at you in the eyes. Let me start telling you a little story about a, a man in the Middle Ages who's walking in the countryside and discovers a stone quarry and decides to go and visit this the stone quarry. And this man, you know, in the middle of this mess, rock, dust, he bumps into one of the stonemasons who's working there. He's laboriously working with his hammer and his chisel. And the man asks the stonemason, what are you doing? The stonemason replies to the man, can't you see? I'm cutting this damn stone and I was told to cut it. I'm too busy to waste my time with useless questions. So the man, the man is, well, a little this yeah, disturbed by this answer but okay this man is cutting a down stone so this man continues strolling through the quarry and discovers another stone mason and asks him the same question what are you doing and the second stone mason looks up at the man and says i'm polishing the perfect granite block with the use of my tools i've spent years learn this trade and I really enjoy it. Very different answer, right? So the man continues walking a bit further in the quarry and meets a third stone mason. And at first the stone mason totally ignores the question and he continues moving around this granite boulder almost like as if he was dancing to a music that no one could hear. And after a few minutes of very uncomfortable silence, the stonemason looks at the man with a huge smile on his face. And um, <clears throat> the stonemason grabs the man by his hand. Well, this was obviously before social distancing. <laughs> and takes the man to the top of a little hill and points at a big hole in the ground. Says, that's what I'm doing. And the man looks around and doesn't understand. So he asks again, oh, but really, what exactly are you doing? And the stonemason replies, I'm building a cathedral so that people in my village can be closer to God. It's a beautiful story. It's not uh, of, my, of my craft. But what this story, story tells us it's something that uh, Simon Sinek calls the golden circle model. Some of you probably know about it. It contains three circles, three concentric circles. In the outer ring, you have the what. And then that means your hard skills, your competences, your output to the world. No, like cutting stones day in, day out. In the middle ring, you find the how. 
That means the way you do things, your process, your style, your methods, which can be very unique. You know, like cutting the perfect stone with your own tools. That's, some, that's the how, and that makes, yeah, that's a pretty unique thing. And in the inner circle, you find the why, your purpose, your raison d'être. You know, for instance, it's building a cathedral. And you're probably asking yourself, uh, you know, what does this have to do with the theme announced for Creative Mornings, uh, which was about identity in times of coronavirus? Uh, I'm in the wrong Zoom conversation here. Uh, so please bear with me. <clears throat> I ask for your patience a little bit. Because I think we could argue that in these three concentric circles, the what, the how, and the why, I believe that there's something even more nuclear, nuclear, something that's right in the middle. It's just a dot. It's not even a circle. It's in the middle. And that's the who. In, in other words, it's your identity. It's what you stand for. It's what really matters for you. Like making a place where your people can feel close to God. And that dot that really tiny place which seems so insignificant and so invisible sometimes we don't even remember that it's there it's actually what serves as a guiding star when you need to manage your life when you need to manage your company when you need to manage relationships especially when you need to take decisions hard decisions in tough times and i'm sure that many of you have been taking tough decisions in recent times. So I guess now you start you know, connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. Let me be very frank with you. The last few weeks have been very tough. Very, very, very tough. For all of us, for sure. I can only truly uh, talk about uh, myself. Yeah, for my friends and partners, Ali, Alex, Pablo, also for the people that are close to us in, in the family, but also in the company, Max, Serge, Matthias, Celine, Maria, Oli, Teresa, Haeli, for all of our team. This has been the most challenging, these have been the most challenging days since we started the studio in 2008. And uh, yeah, we started this studio right at the beginning of the global credit meltdown the same day the Lehman Brothers collaborators were leaving the skyscraper we were starting our company um, yet um, these times these recent times have been much tougher than that but we have faced these challenges with uh, great optimism and with auth authenticity you know the guiding star I mentioned earlier because we've always had it there we've always had that guiding star very present in every decision that we've taken. And for us, our guiding star is our company culture, our values, which uh, you know all our team, all our employees, 60 of them, share and live every single day. I'm not going to share today the values of, uh, of Studio Banana because uh, a while back, Together with our team, we decided collectively that we prefer keeping them for ourselves, at least for the time being. However, what I'm going to do today is share with you a little exercise that we did to define our values together, you know, to help us find that invisible dot, that that you know, that thing that sometimes we can forget about, which is the who, your identity, which lies right in the middle of those circles I mentioned earlier. Every year with the arrival of the good weather, so hopefully very soon <laughs> again, our whole team parks for a few days the work that we're doing with projects, with clients. We leave it uh, for a second on the board, on the, on the drawing, sorry, on the, on the table. And uh, we take time for a retreat. And this retreat is, you know, it's like the step back um 
we we heard about before in this story about the, the shadow this step to the side i would say this retreat is what allows us our team <clears throat> to look back at our, at our own learnings and achievements of the past few months and also to define our objectives together for the coming months and to focus our energies on the right in the right direction and in one of those gatherings <clears throat> and uh, here i'm going to contradict what i said earlier because i've got a couple of images to you know, to put a little bit in the ambience of that uh, let's see i think you are sick. that's uh, our team coming together in one of these recent retreats and uh, we did a little exercise which uh, may be very simple when i describe it to you but actually it's incredibly meaningful we asked uh, all of ourselves to uh, bring a photo of ourselves as a child Uh, we asked each of us to ask that, you know, child version of ourselves if she or he would be proud of what you have become. And uh, it may seem like just a silly game, but actually what emerged out of this were the values. Because you're asking the most innocent, the purest version of yourself if you're in line with that, you're asking yourself whether what you are is in line with who you are. This exercise allowed us to talk openly and you know, to open that door of authenticity, to open uh, that dialogue, to talk about what we really care about as individuals and as a community. And we started sharing this and having a conversation about it. And uh, this conversation came together. It led us to this, to this beautiful circle, slowly clustering, slowly realizing that what brings us together in this company is not work, is values, is a culture, is the way we see the world. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. And that, those were almost the last slides uh, I'm gonna share with you today. Um, if you if you find it too complicated to have a conversation with yourself as a child, don't worry. There are many other ways in which you can um, try to decipher uh, and uh, make your personal and collective values come to the surface. For instance, for instance, in, in Japan, there's this model called the Ikigai. Um, which is focused on finding, and um, this is sorry, I'm gonna share again screen. Sorry, I'm, I'm switching constantly. Uh, share screen again. There you are. Ikigai is this very, very specific place in, in each of us and also in, in communities in communities that are authentic that are brought together by true value creation it's this place where what you're good at what you love and what other people need overlap very simple questions yet very very hard to answer so I've been talking now for a good number of minutes, and uh, as uh, Tina Roth said, it's about the connection. It's not about me coming here and giving you uh, a monologue. So I'd like to do a little interactive exercise with all of you. I'm gonna put this link on the chat of uh, 
Zoom, so you don't need to memorize it, don't worry. And uh, I will ask you to uh, go to it. So let me get it for you. Copy and hopefully it will work. You have the chat open. You see the link that I just pasted in there. And uh, you can all go there. You're obviously all online. No one has the excuse today. And I'm gonna give you still a few seconds. Rahel? Yep. Ah, good. Okay, so I gather you're all ready now. And uh, I'm asking you a very simple question. What is your Ikigai? That place where what you love, what you're good at, and what others need overlap. Simple question, super hard question. You can write, you can write multiple answers as well. I, I wouldn't recommend you to put too many because uh, Ikigai has to be a very unique place. You can also like each other's uh, answers. There's a possibility to, to, to say oh, you like or you love, you know. <clears throat> And I'm going to be sharing screen because you will see what you guys are doing together. Some more answers. 72 people have participated only. I know that you're 114, so there's a few, a few lazy ones there. <laughs> ah, there you are. We see it growing. Fabulous. 101 answers. Come on. Where are those 13 that are missing? And you can like each other's as well. So maybe take now a few minutes, a few seconds to go through the list and see if you can find Iki guys from other colleagues from the community who that you like. There you are. 142 people, fantastic. Last few seconds. Someone's writing in the chat. Ivana says it's too fast to like it. That sounds like the title of a crazy movie, too fast to like it. Okay, so let's look at the results. I think you're looking at the at the word cloud. Let's look at it now in the list format. Yeah. I think it's still processing. There you are. Oh, 210 answers. Fantastic. Just getting richer and richer. 243. 207. Wow. Overwhelming. Let's see. Sorry. I think you guys have been too active and <clears throat> it's locked down the platform. There you are. Top results, empathy, 
community, listening, humor, love. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Amazing. Thank you very much, everyone, for your contribution. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I, will, I promise I will share the results afterwards. <clears throat> uh, I will stop the vote now. And, uh, okay, fantastic. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for, for your contribution. Um, and, uh, you know, now on to very, very pragmatic things. Um, Rahel, you mentioned at the beginning of the, of the talk, um, uh, the, the, the excuse of what led you to inviting us, <coughs> excuse me, to, to this talk is that the other day you were sharing, uh, with the creative community Zurich, creative uh, mornings community in Zurich some tips and um, some uh, tricks, tips and tricks for managing the, the current situation, working from home. Uh, some of you even have uh, school, uh, homeschooling kids at home like, like myself. Um, I don't have magical formula, the magical formula. There is, of course, lots of uh, noise nowadays in the internet about what is, the best way to manage uh, online communications, to create uh, uh, the perfect video conference. <clears throat> I'm not going to pretend to be better than any of those uh, pieces of advice. I just tell you a few of the things that following our guiding star, following our identity, we have put in place. And some of them are totally open to participation from people outside um, our, our studio, our team. We've started group stretching sessions because uh, we've uh, noticed in the first few days, we, we went all remote uh, very early in this whole process it's already like more than, I think this is the end of our third week um, working from home. And we realized early that uh, people were spending way too much time sitting on their behinds and uh, in the same place. Whereas in the studio, well, we call it our studio, the physical studio campus. Uh, we like promoting people to walk and to change um, location because we believe that um, that uh, triggers new thoughts and encounters and we're not getting any, any of that. And we decided to start group stretching sessions uh, three times a week at midday, and they are actually open uh, to anyone uh, to join. Sometimes, uh, yeah, we have um, Mariana, who's our happiness manager. She's the one leading the stretching sessions, and uh, sometimes she's you know, um, leading a group of uh, 50, 60 people, and half of them we don't even know who they are. <laughs> they just pop in. <laughs> And, uh, and we love it, of course, you know, uh, the more the merrier. So if you're interested um, on participating in a group stretching sessions, you can write a, an email to us, uh, info at studiobanana.com. And uh, Mariana will, will invite you. Just say, I want to be part of the group stretching sessions, the banana stretching sessions. And uh, she'll invite you. We've also uh, tried to take you know, times with a little a pinch of humor as well. And we launch um, challenges internal to our community every day. Yesterday was me. I had to do a spinning class for everyone else. Uh, don't know how that went. <laughs> you should ask my colleagues. Uh, I'll, I'll share with you something because some of these challenges are actually shared on our uh, social media or you can get a feel of that and you know that's these are initiatives that any of you are I think in a position to to start um, you don't need to have a, a big team you, you don't need to, yeah, you you can have you have your networks your friends your community 
and um, <clears throat> yeah, this was the the morning commute session uh, challenge. Let's see if it plays out. We realized that we we all missed that early commute. You know that 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 those few minutes that allow you to make a break between home and work, they are so valuable. You know, now now we realize that we miss them. Of course, when we are then jumped in the train or in the underground, we hate it. But now we realize we missed that that moment, that transition. Uh, so we started this challenge, the the shower commute. Uh, and we and we share it with the with the with the rest of the world. This is uh, you know some of the conversations our colleagues have about managing uh, time off and managing suddenly your ecosystem, your physical ecosystem is reduced to the different rooms in your flat. What do you do? Well, you have to thematize them. You have to use your balcony in very creative ways. You have to have certain rules about <clears throat> I'm coming into this room that means i'm leaving you guys and i'm going to another world for a few minutes or for a few hours um so all of this is uh, yeah, available through in this case through our link okay and um <clears throat> let me see if uh missing a few things as i said sorry if, um, but everything is super structured this morning. Doing my best here. Um, yeah, and finally a little um, story also, as you probably notice, I like stories a lot. <laughs> little story that um, we shared with uh, with our with our colleagues. We again, we're creative. We like uh, rubbing each other's shoulders. Sometimes having uh, heated conversations. We like we like you know having our colleagues next to us, uh, having those uh, intense uh, creative sessions. And um, all of a sudden, we were deprived of uh, all of that. And this was sudden, we were not uh, planning for it. We were forced into it. And um, on the first few days were gloomy. The first uh, few days, we didn't have uh, any of these, you know, daily challenges, stretching sessions, our little um, rituals, new rituals for this new normality. We didn't, we hadn't developed them. And um, we were telling the story of the fisherman village. Uh, people in fishing in you know by the seaside fishermen they meet in the evenings and they're very social they share the catch of the day they can have a few beers tell stories to each other but early in the morning they go out into the sea in their boats by themselves they don't have one another of course, they can send distress messages, and I think that's important also, especially in these times that we're very alert to distress messages. But uh, the, the lay of the ground is that by and large, people are by themselves during the day. That doesn't mean that they cannot count on each other. That doesn't mean that they cannot uh, reconnect in the evening or reconnect in the morning. That's again, you set your own rituals. That's something that um, we we use as a metaphor, and uh, again, it was really in line with our guiding stars, with our values. It was about togetherness. It was about not losing our uh, our strength as a community. But we started to have uh, virtual town halls, regular, and uh, you know, 
ironically, some of our colleagues were saying yesterday, we're actually communicating more now than when we were seeing each other. And uh, it's not totally true, I think, when we were seeing each other we were communicating in different ways. There's also, you know, non-visual, non-verbal communication that counts a lot. But now we're making it a ritual. Uh, we're making an active effort to all be there in those town hall sessions, to share our concerns, to, to raise our hand, to, you know, if someone needs to send a distress message, uh, she or he has, has the space and the time to do so. And uh, the last thing that I had noted here as a you know, tip and trick uh, is uh, as creatives, we are all dependent on other people believing in our creativity, obviously, be it our clients, our partners, our audiences, our suppliers, people need to believe in what we do. And, uh, and this is being challenged uh, tremendously. Uh, we, we hear, you know, I was reading this morning, three million people have gone unemployed in the US alone in the last uh, couple of weeks. That's crazy. And the kinds of decisions that are being taken. Um, our approach to this is that we need to be authentic. We need to be open. We need to be frank. Something we've done uh, actively since uh, the beginning of this crisis well, three weeks ago we've grabbed the telephone and we've talked to every single one of our clients partners suppliers every single one and and it's a ritual that we repeat it's not once and for all we have that conversation um if you don't start that conversation that conversation will be hidden somewhere underneath the carpet and at some time it will come out. Your client might come, will come back to you or come to you and say, hey, you know what? That project that we're doing together. Mm. And uh, of course, you don't want these decisions to be taken uh, separately because it really uh, can hurt the trust that you have taken years maybe to build with your customers, with your clients, with your users, with your audiences. So take, uh, my recommendation here would be, take a proactive approach. It's, it's in everyone's mind. Uh, you're not going to shock anyone by raising this conversation. On the contrary, I think you're gonna show empathy. You're gonna show you care about how this affects your relationship with other people. and. Uh, by doing this, it's a little bit, I believe, like the photo of your child or, or yourself as a child. You're opening a door to a level of conversation, um, to, a, to a degree of <clears throat> honesty that um, you, know, you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Um, I hope that uh, tips and tricks and stories and uh, photos of your Self as child, I hope that all of these, all of this has been somewhat inspiring or at least entertaining. Uh, I'm super open to questions. Firstly, um, I'm also open to being contacted afterwards. My email, uh, no secret here, is k k e y at studiobanana.com. So I'm happy to communicate. Lately. Uh, my days feel like very short, but uh, I, I promise sooner, hopefully rather than later, I can reply messages if you contact me. And um, I will also share on, on the chat, I will share through the file upload option, uh, a picture of the word cloud. It's something that you've created together uh, all of you, how many people now, Clahel? 115 now. 115, 115. All 115 of you have built this beautiful mosaic together. It can hopefully trigger some conversations and uh, yeah, give you food for thought. It's been uh, amazing talking to you. Um, I wish 
only that uh, this was more of a dialogue that this could be more interactive that we could yeah that i could talk to each of you that you can all talk to each other but uh, i believe actually rahel uh, there's a functionality in zoom that you're going to activate right to trigger those corridor conversations sorry i just did not get it. the presentation uh, Yes, I think you're going to activate um, this functionality in Zoom to have uh, small breakouts, right? Yes, we will. But there is a question for you. Ah, fantastic. Frank is asking, can you elaborate on how you communicate differently now compared to before coronavirus crisis? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Fra Frank, right? Frank, yes, thank you, Frank. Um, I, I'm not sure in what sense, you know, I could not put a finger on how it is different. I believe we, or I like thinking that we are honest in the way we communicate, and that we've always been um, authentic about the way we put our messaging together. However, it's true that, um, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the talk, we see a level of tolerance and empathy and uh, somehow relaxation. Maybe it's not the right word, relaxation, but I think people are much more open to receiving even more authenticity in communication. Uh, as I mentioned, that gentleman on the BBC with his kids, he was terribly embarrassed, obviously. <laughs> Uh, I think if this happened now, I think uh, the reaction of the individual, but also of the audience would be totally different. And, uh, and I see that, that's something that uh, part of our communication manager and Robert, our copywriter, they have, uh, they have adapted also to, to the era of the time. And uh, you know, sharing photos of our showers, uh, that's something that certainly uh, a few months ago would have been hard to think, <laughs> and uh, yet uh, there you are. We are we sharing photos of uh, of ourselves in the shower, <laughs> and uh, and it's fantastic. There's another question for you, uh, Kay. I wonder how you deal with people who are mostly afraid and act from fear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It's a natural reaction and no one needs to be blamed uh, or put in the spotlight for that. It's, you know, it's the most, uh, you know, our most basic instincts, fight, fright, fly. Um, fear is, is a natural reaction to uncertainty. Um, it's the distress message I mentioned earlier. It is totally legitimate to send out a distress message. In fact, it's super important to do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we are part of a community, our psyche could be tricked by, yes, together, yes, we are strong, yes, we are invincible, yes, I have no problems. And, and indeed, we, we all have the right to have problems and to, and to be fearsome of some things. Um, we are creating also, you know, I haven't shared with you all the things that we are putting together, but we have created also um, policy, uh, small spaces for small conversations to it's happen. Awesome. And um, we have uh, also reached out to experts, experts in mindfulness and experts in stress management because well firstly we care about the well-being of uh, of our people that's uh, you know, in in our creative industry like you all are uh, it's the human capital that counts and if we're stressed if we are uncomfortable if not we're not feeling well um, we cannot be given the best version of ourselves um, what we care is that people give their best what they're most. Um, in order to give your best, you need to get rid of yes, uh, some, some
and kids in the background. Um, in order to give you best, you need to get uh, to manage your fears. And I say manage is not just silence your fears or get rid of your fears. You need to manage them, to understand where they are, to put them in the right place. And understand that is a mechanism, uh, you know, a defense mechanism that uh, we humans have to, to, to deal with the uncertain. That's why having conversations and taking the time for those conversations is super important. And uh, I'm beyond proud and beyond happy with the, you know, the work that my team have been doing, supporting each other and those who are more chilled and more relaxed and more zen about things, supporting the ones who are a bit more nervy and uh, you know who may have more um, the fear reaction or the oh my god reaction. And uh, yeah, together, and I think this is really the word. Together, we can build this safety net so that no one falls through the cracks. Okay, thank you so much, Kay. Um, yeah, I think people might run to their other computer <laughs> to uh, start working. Um, I'm so, so happy and grateful that you are here, um, that you shared with us your, um, your stories and your thoughts and um, this nice um, online questionnaire. Um, I would like also to thank um, Christopher for uh, lighting up the morning with this beautiful song. By the way, you quoted his, his um, words. I think it's a nice, uh, the circle is closing. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And now, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe I should try the breakout sessions just so people can chat in smaller groups, whoever is interested in. Um, it's my first time I do it. So whoever has more time to stay, just uh, stay with us. I will break the sessions, like breakout sessions in three to four participants. So you can talk to each other like for five minutes or so. Maybe you want to catch up um, or talk about uh, something uh, that Kate brought up or you just want to say hi and yeah, talk to each other. So I would like, I will just, um, yeah, start them now. So wish me luck and wish you luck. And if you don't get back to me, just thank you so much for being here and for enjoying. Uh, and I want to draw your attention to a message in the chat from Cynthia who says, I will draw a digital graphic recording of this talk and she will post it on her LinkedIn. Hey, yes. thanks, Cynthia. I took a screenshot of that and I will share it on social media too. So thank you so much. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm, I just realized that I'm not that multifunctional. I cannot talk, read the chat and create breakout sessions, but I will do break, um, uh, create them now. So good luck to all of us. Thank you, yeah. everyone. It's been a great pleasure being with you. Have a great day.